good. Okay, good evening, everyone. If you please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today is uh, Tuesday, May 10, 2022, the time being 5.30 p.m. The City of Greensburg's Board of Public Works is called to order. At this time, please silence electronic devices. To comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the City requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that's available on the table in the back of the room. Uh, Jamie Kane is joining us via Zoom this evening. Amy, would you please call the roll? Rodney King? Here. Glenn Tebbe? Here. Karen D. Rust? Here. And Jamie Kane? Here. There being no um, <coughs> approval of the minutes from April 12, 2022, you all should have received a copy of those. Any edits, additions, or corrections? If not, we take a motion to approve those as presented. Second. Second. Motion has been made by D, seconded by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. There being no old business, we'll move directly to new business. Amy Bournes, clerk, treasurer for the city, two items, civic systems. Yes, the first one is the hosting contract. So in, when we first, one of the great things about, I say this like I was there, I wasn't there, but anyway, it, when, we, when they started this process, one of the great things about this, process, about this uh, new system is that it was going to be accessible from home, from other devices, not just, we didn't just have to come in here to our desktop and be able to work on it. Um, I will say that the hosting has already been used multiple times by, I think, all of us in my office, um, being able to use it from home during inclement weather, being sick, home with a sick child, whatever it may be. Um, but with our first bill, we found out that it was not part of our original contract, so they're adding this, or we are agreeing, we would like to agree to this contract because we feel like this is really beneficial. Um, having talked to Donna, she said that she was aware of the additional cost and had planned for it. Um, I don't know if I just was out of the loop with that, and so I didn't because I was just looking at the original contract. So um, we would like to sign this contract and move forward with it. Um, do you have any questions for me? We do have a place <coughs> out of our budget where we can find the money for it on my side. And I have talked to them and they said that they will bill us separately from now on. Um, they will bill Donna her portion and me our portion so that it's not combined like I had been What we're looking at now is the total for both. That is the total for both. For so the city. <coughs> yes, and that includes building and zoning as well right. for them to have the access as well. I do remember the previous conversation, mm -hmm. and I thought it had done, been voted in, so I'm in favor of it. I didn't remember that we had that this was an additional piece, but uh, it's it's needed, it's necessary, and it's um, so I agree. Is there a motion to approve the contract as presented? So moved. Second. Motion's been made by Rodney, second by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Second item, ACA. Okay, so I'm gonna have Julie come up and help me explain this because this has more to do with end of the year, payroll, um, it is, a document that goes out with our W-2s that has to do with insurance and Affordable Care Act. Yeah. And we have to send this. So do you want to yes. explain yes. So this? 1094 and 1095C, um, it's something we're required to do because we have more than 50 full-time employees. It was included in our Keystone package and it was not included in the Civic package. Um, luckily, I was able to run it all on Keystone in December before Civic before January 1st, so we were okay for January. We had to create a few by hand, but um, you have to put every single dependent on this with their social, with their date of birth, and what month they were covered. So it would and be- that is whether or not they are taking our insurance. If they are an employee, we have to include everyone who is yeah. full-time. <coughs> All employees.
employees have to get one, or all full-time employees have to get one of these. So to have a program that would keep track of this and then I just have to keep it updated would be ideal. Yeah, the annual cost on this is minimal, um, and that would be, that's total again for both city and uh, utilities. I don't know the answer to that question. I will find that out. Uh, we, one would hope, one would expect that if that's what they're doing. It says We do have, I mean, our system is one, I mean, we talk with the utilities, so I don't see why. Uh, yeah, I, I would think that would it would be. be an issue. That's what I understood when we got it. Uh, Donna may know differently, but I would think that this would be, you know, the the initial cost, the licensing fee, which, but the annual cost of seven hundred bucks is minimal. So that, and it would make sense. I mean, it's it has to be done, and the amount of. Um, yeah, I, I would hate to know how long it would take to do it without a program. <laughs> yeah, I would think so too. So, uh, I I would agree to to this as well. I don't know what colleagues think about it. I agree. Jamie, anything? Let's do it. I'll make a motion with pass to approval for approval. Motion's been made by Jamie, seconded by D. All those in, or Amy, please call them. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Amy. Up next, um, late addition to the agenda. Hopefully you picked up one. Uh, John Pratt is here this evening. Uh, he is kind of heading up the bicentennial activities, and he has a request for the bicentennial parade on the 11th. John, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you have before you one of the 50 events planned for this year's uh, Bicentennial, that being the Bicentennial Parade being held on Saturday, June 11th at 10 a.m. You will look at the route, and it's probably one that you have seen before. This is the same route that the Fall Festival takes, with one exception. Uh, you will see that it will end at Franklin instead of veering to the left one block, and we will not be ending at the Porter Auger Pearson Funeral Home. And the quite uh, simply, the reason is the floats will veer off to the left, and our celebrities, dignitaries, entertainers, historical impersonators will veer to the right for photo ops for the general public. I did ask uh, Chief McNeely about this this morning. He didn't have any concerns with it. Obviously, this is a pretty standard parade route for us. Any questions for Joan on this? If not, we take a motion to approve the road closures for the Bicentennial Parade. Second. Motion's been made by D, seconded by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? John? Yes. And John, while you're here, uh, if you wouldn't mind, a couple minute update on where the Bicentennial stands and what's coming next. I would be happy to share an update on the Bicentennial. Thus far, we have had eight events. All have been well attended and very successful. May is an emphasis on our veterans. Uh, one of our culminating events we're looking forward to sharing with the community uh, will be 100 banners that honor individual veterans on Lincoln Street, 40 other non-military historical significant individuals in downtown, and this will be the vast majority will be historically significant individuals going back to the Civil War, um, and uh, Mayor Marsh has been very helpful in working with us through that process. I will also say that uh, we look to honor our veterans in a number of ways, including our goal is to decorate every veteran buried in Decatur County with not only a flag, but artificial flowers throughout the county. And so we have been embarking on that endeavor. The culminating event will be a patriotic concert on May the 31st at the Rebecca Park Amphitheater by the Tom Doherty Orchestra out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, and that is one of 15 concerts, the vast majority being held at the Rebecca Park Amphitheater that will take place between now and um, Labor Day. 
And there's a number of other major events that will happen throughout the summer, including the first weekend in October, when we will welcome the, Car the Garfield Shakespeare Company out of Indianapolis for a weekend of Shakespeare in the Park. Uh, I would also look to, uh, very excited uh, about a um, bicentennial comic book that which will be released by Labor Day as well. The bicentennial comic book will be 34 pages, a historically significant event or person um, will fill each one of those pages and uh, it is being done by a professional comic strip panelist uh, who can be seen in publications like the New Yorker magazine. Um, and that publication will be plenty for the general public, but already we have requests from every elementary school and we have allocated at least one per student in each of those locations. That's a quick overview. I welcome any questions. I don't have a question, but I just want to say thanks, Sean. You really put a lot of time and effort in this and um, hats off to you. Um, so, well done. Plus well, thank, thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks. You're welcome. Perfect. Jamie, anything from your side? Well, just thanks. I are we able to promote those events maybe on the city website or? It's all linked through the calendar at the Visit Greensburg since tourism is kind of heading it up there. Calendar is the running list um, master calendar. And then Kristen's been putting uh, some of the bigger events on the sign at Lincoln and Maine. And, and then we talk about it on the radio every week or two. So the visitgreensburg.com calendar is where everyone should go. That is correct. And if you go to the Visit Greensburg uh, website, if you look on the upper right-hand column, you can see an up-to-date, uh, complete schedule of events. Perfect. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Up next, Fire Chief Nathan Sturmer. We've got a couple different items for us this evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, so first on the uh, agenda is uh, the, the awarding of the uh, contractor or developer um, and subsequent contractor for um, the fire station process. Um, upon meeting with multiple contractors, we had six originally apply, uh, three were shortlisted and then interviewed, um, and then um, our fire station committee then met um, twice after to discuss, um, as it was a very tough decision. Um, it currently is the recommendation of the fire station committee to enter into an agreement with GM development with Meyer Nasium as the construction manager. Um, Meyer Nasium does not chain or charge a scoping <coughs> fee which allows us to get to a um, guaranteed maximum price which then allows us to actually set that budget. Um, individual representatives from uh, Meyer Nasium are on the way. They will be here for the um, city council meeting um, if you do wish to, to stay and speak to them um, I just spoke with him just a minute ago, and he is currently on his way um, So with that we would like to make that um, award um, with GM development as the developer um, and then utilizing Meyer Nasium as our um, construction manager Any questions? I don't have a question, but I and I'm Part of the committee, so I, I'm obviously in support of, of this uh, proposal. But I, I want to make it clear that this is part of the process that there's no decision made yet until we get further down the way. We need these things in place in order to get to a point where we can make a decision that yes or no on whether it will be built or not built. So we're not making a decision yet tonight that it's full steam ahead. We're making a decision that. This is the next step in the process to get us to a point where we can make an informed decision about um, the, the cost of it and, and the bond and so forth. Absolutely. This is forward progress, um, but there is other um, issues t tonight that are going to keep this either project alive or, or 
you know, that will stop this project. Um, and, and part of this is, like you said, Glenn, is, is getting to that. Uh, we have to have them on board to get a scoping fee. To get a scoping fee, that gets us to our, our budget. So the, the final and ultimate decision is left up to uh, the bond decision um, and the vote on the bond. So everything that we're doing, we have to do to get to that point. Um, so we're continuing to, to move forward and make forward progress um, until basically an outside force acts upon us and stops us. And uh, the other thing is that if, if we uh, were to work, say yes, as far as our stamp of approval in terms of contractual part of this, um, it really is the council's decision. I mean, I think we would make it with, with the council's approval. The bond. The bond. Well, the bond Just, will then obviously be theirs, but in terms of um, this, this making con sure that, that the... This, this that con, the, well... Well, I understand it, but I just... I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not trying to go, go around the council. No, and we have not, I mean, in, in everything that we've done with the fire station project so far has been repetitive and, and parroted to the to Board of Works initially and then to right. council. So everything that is ask approval is then ask approval of them pending one or another's approval. And then, you know, the, the updates are given at the, at the same time. Um, hour apart, um, keeping trying to keep everybody abreast of that situation and on the same page. Maybe I'm overlooking it, but I don't see anything in our packet that shows this contract. Is there a dollar amount tied to this specific? The scoping fee does not have a dollar amount tied to it at all. Okay. Um, the scoping fee is entered into it. It, it is a contractual agreement, but the scoping fee carries no fee whatsoever. Um, to get us to that guaranteed maximum price. After, after that is accepted, um, and that guaranteed maximum price is what the council and, and the board of works feel is suitable, then we would we would enter into that. This is an agreement with GM Development to utilize build, operate, transfer as a method of procurement for the fire station. Motion's been made by Rodney. Is there a second? Second. Second by D. Any other questions? Jamie, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Next item, destruction of <coughs> surplus property. Uh, the fire department is in possession of uh, several VHF radios that are no longer supported by Motorola or any outside vendors. There is no um, financial worth to these um, this equipment anymore, um, nor is it repairable or usable. Um, just seeking to destroy this permission and remove it from our inventory. There's no other department or anyone that could use it. Not, no, unfortunately, not because they're not usable. They're not repairable. They're not so if they break it. So it basically would be a one-time use, and they are they are archaic. I would make Motion's been made by D. Is there a second? Second. Second by Rodney. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Next item on the agenda, invitation. Uh, yeah, just I want to, invites were sent out last week, but I do want to personally invite uh, each one of you to attend our department recognition ceremony being held tomorrow night here at City Hall in the multi-purpose room. Um, the program starts at uh, 6 p.m. Um, and we will be recognizing um, multiple members for two separate um, cardiac arrest saves. Those individuals were able to walk out of the hospital um, and resume a normal and full life, as well as um, this year, um, the department has decided to create a um, Firefighter of the Year Award, um, nominated and voted on by their peers. Um, so we'll be, uh, we'll be giving that out for the first time this year after a long, long hiatus of that. So um, hopefully you can make it. If not, understand, but I uh, want to give out the invite. So thank you. Thanks. Um, before you walk away, so uh, Commissioner Closter came for can't be with us this evening. A couple things. Um, he, we need to do the same style of thing for the street department project conversation about the build up rate transfer. Correct. So as a um, we talk about this project and as the committee has talked about this project and 
basically advancing and forwarding our, our, our street department's um, issues and needs that they have um, in replacement and, and building as well. Um, it, it's best been determined and described currently that we um, approach this as a second phase or an additional project uh, to the fire station project on the same um, land basically that, that we would, would try to acquire. So with that, we have to enter into a separate um, build operate transfer agreement with a developer and a, and a contractor. Um, and those contractors have met with the fire station committee, has kind of been the committee that we've, we've um, leaned, leaned on for the street department as well. Um, and with that, tonight comes a recommendation to uh, utilize GM development and uh, runabout construction for the um, construction of the um, street department. And the reason why, if anybody does ask, the reason why Runabout is doing the, the street department and then Meyer Nation would be doing the fire station is, is the street department required and requested a pre-engineered metal building to where the fire department did not require or wanted something more than a pre-engineered metal building. So um, we, we sought out the best of, of contractors that provide both services um, and, and both, both teams are, are satisfied with um, those individuals that have been selected to, to purchase that. Or not purchase, but enter into that agreement. Any questions on that? And again, the same caveat as Glenn explained earlier, um, still stands. This is, a, this is to move the for project forward um, and, and keep that forward progress going until it comes time for a um, vote for bond. Motion's been made by Rodney. Is there a second? Second. Second by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. The next item on the agenda is owner's representation. This is the something that was approved last month for the fire station project. We would like to add it for the street uh, department as well. Uh, David Rainey with Veritas Group is here again this month. Um, it's the same document, same presentation, but if you have other questions, and I, I think, did you find that in your folder? I dropped that in your folder. Uh, I think I put it in the wrong folder. Anyway, um, David, do you want to, does anybody have questions for David? It's the same percentage of the project ex estimation, and it's on an as-used basis. So, any questions? I just would say there's value added by having this, so that it's, I think it's prudent to do it. Is that a motion to approve? Yes. Motion's been made by Glenn. Is there a second? So moved. Seconded by Rodney. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chief, for stepping in on yep. that. Uh, Zeke, Wastewater Superintendent Zeke Smith. Um, we have task order number 22 dash zero one. Good evening. Good evening, board, uh, Mayor. A couple items on the agenda for me uh, this evening as well. We will start with the Strand Associates uh, Task Order 2201, uh, essentially uh, seeking approval for hundred and forty-six thousand to kind of go forward with Improving, implementing, replacing our current uh, UV disinfection system. You know, we've been working on this for several months. Thing is still on schedule. Um, hoping for a turn on, kind of power on date of April 1st, of 2023. If everything goes as planned with kind of ordering material and, and things of that nature, it's kind of been tough there. But uh, so far on schedule for that improvement. Zeke, do you have any concerns about this contract? I do not have any concerns regarding this contract. <laughs> okay. We've worked them a number of times on yeah. this, so it's not like we're, we don't know what we're getting. Um, Correct. Right. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve task order number 2022-01. 20, Moved. 
Motion's been made by Glenn, seconded by Dee. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. And a slightly new topic for us, MS4, and an update from that. Yep, uh, so your other documents should have in front of you regarding MS4, like the mayor says. Well, we currently have a contract with Burke Engineering to assist us on kind of roles and responsibilities, job duties pertaining to MS4. IDEM has recently came out with some updates, mandates, regarding that MS4 program, and I have these guys here from Burke to assist in kind of telling a better story as to kind of what that entails. So, with that being said, I'll introduce your guests. Uh, Lori Gates. Good evening, everyone. Um, just wanted to share with you uh, some of the updates that are going on with IDEM in terms of uh, what they have. Uh, release, there's a new permit for the MS4 program. So Greensburg has been subject to this MS4 program since 2003. Um, so we've been waiting quite a while for a, an updated permit. Um, IDEM, the state of Indiana, has been behind for quite some time. So there's there are a lot of updates because EPA has moved forward with this mandated program. Um, and so now we have to play catch up. Um, MS4 is the stormwater. Yes, municipal separate storm sewer system. Uh, so it deals with the, the separate storm. It covers the pipe conveyances, but it also covers any ditches that the city would maintain on a regular basis. Um, so they designate the entire community, and then there are program elements that go along with that. So one of the handouts, um, and we brought you a larger copy because there's a lot on this, but this includes everything that has to be implemented with this particular plan. So several of these items that we've highlighted on here are actually new or all the, the requirements are enhanced as well. Um, so for example, up at the top it talks about different permit documents, reports that are required, um, new requirements for staff training that we haven't had before, and then underneath that starts each of the separate six program elements that are required as part of this permit. So there's public education, an illicit discharge program. Illicit means if you have a separate pipe, a uh, separate storm pipe, it's designed only to convey clean storm water. It wasn't designed to clean up or treat anything because those conveyances are going directly to a receiving water body. So part of that is to keep some of the pollutants out of that particular system. So it includes things like mapping, checking the outfalls, but also an illegal dumping prohibition that's part of your existing ordinance. Um, the ordinance has to be updated. Uh, there's also a construction program, uh, so it covers erosion sediment control, also a post-construction program, and then good housekeeping for any of the operations that you have that could potentially affect um, the stormwater runoff. So some of the, the highlighted items that are new, I covered those in this uh, summary document, that's the other page that you received, so it shows some of the deadline dates. Um, and, and by the way, with this implementation plan, this is over the course of one year what has to be completed by the community. So obviously there's a lot to do there in this particular program. Um, so key milestones, there's an application, they call that the notice of intent um, submittal. So that's gonna be due on July 5th. Then also we have to update a water quality characterization report um, for the city. Um, and then also a stormwater quality management plan. This document is a legally enforceable document and it explains to IDEM, here's how the city intends to comply with those six required program elements that are in there. So it includes things like who's responsible, what are some of the measurable goals, and the timelines uh, for those. And once IDEM gets that document, that's what they use in your audits to decide, are, you know, is the city in compliance with all of these different program elements. Um, priority policies, procedures that have to be updated, um, and then reports. So there will be a true annual report process. The next one is due in April um, from the city. There's a lot of data tracking with this program as well because that's how you report to IDEM that we're doing this program. Um, any additional items, questions on that? <coughs> 
the uh, deadlines here, some of yes. them already, April's passed, May is yes. due here now. Yes. And June and <clears throat> this summer. So you are saying that we're going to be able to meet, we have met or will meet all these deadlines for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December of 2022. Yes, we'll be able to meet. Um, part of this is IDEM uh, released the permit. The effective date was December 18th, but then it took them a while. They had um, different issues apparently with the um, and, uh, Office of uh, Management and Budget at the state that is responsible for all the state forms. So there was an issue in getting their application form together. So IDEM has graciously extended the application date so that there would be applications available. So now, and we put the, the red star in your handout there for the application, July 5th is when that is due. So then the plans then would be due by the end of this year. For the updates and that's where there's a lot of heavy lifting uh, with this program and getting those documents together Rick, can you talk a little bit about how you know we've we've been under this since 2003 and how the permit change really set a lot of stuff in motion not just for us but across the state yeah, absolutely so um, there have been um, approximately 185 permits throughout the state of Indiana for various communities. Shelbyville, uh, some of your neighbors, City of Columbus, they've been included in this program as well. Um, IDEM has been working on this permit since 2017. So many communities have been hearing about it, and so much so that last fall, when it was time for budget hearings, they didn't budget for this program. They thought, okay, IDEM's gonna extend this again. So, so uh, a lot of uh, communities were caught off guard that by December that they did come out with this permit. Um, so yes, a lot of communities are struggling to prepare for this and the changes, trying to figure out the responsibilities for staffing, you know, how do we comply, how do we get additional funding um, to handle all these new enhancements. Um, the way these Clean Water Act permits, because it is part of Clean Water Act, these requirements being handed down by EPA, um, every five years, you have more stringent requirements that are placed on our communities. So now IDEM has come out with this new permit, but they've also changed the process for how they issue these permits to where it's more expedited. So every five years now, they will update this permit. There's also a conversation happening about, for us internally, you know, we, we're gonna have to do more compliance now than ever before. This historically has been under our, our wastewater division is that something that you see very often, or is it usually a standalone? Um, it, it can be included under the wastewater department, but um, for example, other MS4 um, communities, you'll see um, typically an MS4 coordinator, someone tasked with this, and, and they call that position a coordinator because you can imagine this program affects multiple departments. So, for example, the good housekeeping, we're talking about any place that would store chemicals, do maintenance, is subject to this program, meaning regular inspections. They have to have a plan for pollution prevention. So this is gonna affect your engineering. Um, it, it, with the construction, it's gonna affect street department. So it's multiple departments working together. So that's where that one staff person, they have to work with the various departments to be able to implement this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions for Lori? Zeke and I talked about this uh, quite a bit, and I know uh, we have yeah. with Burke as well. This isn't something that's going away. It's probably going to get more restrictive as we move forward as well. Any questions about the contract with Burke Engineering to help us uh, get through the year and then help us set up uh, what that maybe coordinator position looks like as part of our stormwater uh, path going forward? Correct. Yeah, we currently have a contract with these guys now as well, so this will be an extension of that. Right, and just through the year. We we have pro, we have sufficient funds, yes. even though budgeting weren't yes. always. I have it in my budget. For this year, so. Any other questions? If not, we take a motion to approve the agreement with Burke Engineering for the MS4 services. Motion's been made by D. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you too very much. First item <coughs> under my section of the agenda, we have a land purchase agreement that's available in your packet for a purchase of property for the proposed fire station uh, project, street department project. We don't have a signed version back from the seller yet, but they are agreeable to the terms in it. I think that it would be in everyone's best interest for time as the purchase agreement allows us to have rights to access the property to do surveys, topographical uh, boring, our crews can visit the site, those types of items. And then we are not delayed another month in that process in order to, to get that done. I spoke with the other attorney, the opposing attorney. They're agreeable to almost everything in the document. And I think it would be our advice that um, should you enter into this agreement, there's two things to happen. One, it's dependent all upon the bond. We don't owe any money if the bond doesn't go through, uh, like all other parts of this project. And two, that the, that the proposal be, my motion to you would be to allow me to sign it under the understanding that there be no substantive legal changes to the document. Maybe we add a comma here or the there, but for the most part, it wouldn't change from a legal lead. Was it no, Josh, I don't think that's in our package. Actually, because this should go to the city council. But now you're up to date. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, yes. I was going to say, I saw it. It's in the packet it's somewhere. But yeah, it's not and this would be a city council conversation. But to keep this board update where we are, that's where we are. So we are approval. You do not need to approve it because well, it. I'll make a motion we approve it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Motion's been made to approve. So, the, just so I understand, um, we won't actually go through with the purchase if, for some reason, the fire station build project is not does not move forward. Correct. <clears throat> That was my understanding <clears throat> from the committee's viewpoint is that our understanding and that um, in terms of the being able to purchase it, it, it also comes, um, price everything seemed to come in within the ability for the city to do it rather than having to try it because it, the agreement to the price was uh, within the scope of the uh, appraisals. So it, it's, uh, it seems to be a pretty good circumstance and uh, yeah I, I think it's right right move um I can assure you as the guy that wrote it there's language that says we don't have to move forward with it until unless it is it is fully contingent upon the bond approval even though we don't have to vote on it or not going to vote on it I just want to make everyone aware that I believe that this board is in uh, agreement that we are in the need of a new fire department and we need to proceed forward. Fire station. Fire station. Excuse me. Thanks, Marvin. We got it. <laughs> 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 although, uh, although a vote is not needed, there has been a motion on the floor. Is there a second to offer support for that? I think I understand. Okay, second's been made by Glenn Amy Culver, please. Rodney. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamie. All of state. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda, in your, in your packet there are two things. There is an agreement with USI um, consultants to work on uh, two and a half phases of something for us. We are uh, currently down the hall hosting a public meeting for our public meeting that NDOT is putting on for the main street projects that are uh, proposed to come. That would infect the east leg of Main Street from about Lincoln Street out past the library and then Ireland Street out to the rail. And part of that discussion is about a, what we put the new term in infrastructure investment is the whole street which includes uh, multimodal pedestrian access etc. Part one of the agreement from USI, and you have a memo in your packet explaining this, is to uh, work on a conceptual design to connect the Rebecca Park Trail end to the 
to be completed part of Main Street once that reconstruction process is done over near the library. Part two to that is that once a route is agreed to with the property owners in that area, then full engineering would be done. That is part of the agreement. Part two of the agreement is to better understand how we would access the kind of dead end part of the trail, east side trail that is in front of Carousel Play and Learn Center up Montgomery Road to Lincoln Street, where obviously we have newer, better uh, sidewalks. <clears throat> the agreement is with USI. The board would agree to this agreement. The Community Foundation has a grant through EI Lilly that they need to spend on walkability and pedestrian activity. This does qualify for that. They have, uh, Tammy Winning has told me that they would be happy to support this. It would cover the entire contract. So it's a zero dollar expense for the city um, to have these two things being more hammered out into more of a finalized version. So just to be clear, um, the, the foundation is going to cover the cost of the of the proposal of drawing it up, not the actual construction of the trails. Correct. Yes, this is the the study and the engineering of the south side and the study of the Montgomery Road section. Do we have an idea of where funds would go to fund the rest of that project? Good question. Where there isn't laid out funds currently. Um, there is a next level trails round four that is a state funded DNR program that's being discussed that hasn't been announced yet. And it does, historically a couple of those rounds have required fully engineered plans to be competitive. And this would fall, you know, once we arrive at that point, then it would be more, uh, more appealing to the selection committee for that. We could also look at what the construction cost would be. Maybe that's something we can absorb locally or do in phases. And does it look like we would have those construction plans completed in time for deadlines to apply for that other program? Phase three was just announced. They haven't said when phase four would come out. So this shouldn't be terribly complicated, but I can't answer that because we don't know what their deadline is, uh, but having them on board would help us meet that. It probably, if I had to guess, would be in the fall. That way they could award it for spring construction season. Any other questions? I, I would make a motion that we um, approve to the contract for approval. Okay, motion. And for Josh to be able to sign it. Yeah. Motion's been made by D. Is there a second? I would second based on the, that we receive the money from the community foundation. That's not the team, then we need to go back and reconsider. I think that's prudent. Would be done. Any? Uh, Sorry, I was not adding that stuff. That's yes, what I was wondering too. I would say it is a. You are voting on the amended motion uh, amended by Dr. Amy, please call the roll. All right. Rodney. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Quick uh, conversation because then we need to amend the agenda because Donna has a utility request I see in here. Um, quick conversation about insurance benefits, uh, salaries. This is something that I've talked to you all about a couple times already this year about, you know, we need to be looking at what that looks like as we approach budget season. Amy and Julie and I have been meeting with um, some companies that kind of can help, help guide us through that process as far as uh, total compensation, how our insurance what we charge for insurance, what benefits it's providing, and salaries, how all of that lines up both comparatively to other public employees and private sector individuals. So this is a sign of a heads up. This is coming. You'll probably get some information over the next couple weeks, um, and then hopefully we'll have a good conversation at next month's meeting about maybe enlisting that company, how they can help us kind of navigate through that process in a way that sets us up to have the conversation for budget season as we talk about salaries and compensation. Obviously a hot topic uh, throughout the community based on rising wages, inflation, cost of living, etc. So that's more of a point of information. Questions I can answer on that at the moment. Okay. 
Um, we do need to amend the agenda for a sewer adjustment from Donna. Can I, I would entertain a motion to amend the agenda to, agenda to add Hello. Donna. Motion's been made, is there a second? Second. Second by Glenn, Amy please call the roll. Rodney. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Amy. Yes. Okay. Now we go to Donna. Okay, Donna, a, a sewer adjustment. Yes. Um, in your package, you should have received the information request for account number 2900180-00 for a very large leak adjustment request. And do you have any questions? I'm assuming these people were out of town for quite a while. No, they did not hear it. And the, the person that lives in the home doesn't go in the basement. Okay. So. So they had an indoor pool. Sounds like it. Yeah. I guess a pipe to the sump pump broke and then other things happened and a lot of it was going out and there ended up being two foot of water in the basement, I guess. How long did that go on? Um, from February the 17th through March 28th. Yeah. That I could yeah exactly yeah. and the way our system works it like our um, radio read system it, it'll have to run for 21 days before it does a large leak alert then we get notified of that we contacted them when we got the alert and then it will not do another alert until <coughs> it stops from a predictable pattern type thing so it did the second alert like on the 29th of March, and we contacted them again on that. Yeah, I was going to point that out. We actually did visit their residence, yes. identified. They didn't answer, I assume. Yes. Um, and then we did multiple calls to them as well. Correct. So there's a, Quite a timeline. A line of things that yes. we did to try to notify them. Yes. Okay. It is repaired. Yes. Any other questions for Donna? If not, would entertain a motion to make the rate adjustment for this customer. So moved. Motion's been made by Rodney. Is there a second? Second. Second by Glenn. Amy, please call the roll. Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Thank you. And real quick um, update, if you don't mind, about the utility bill. Yes. Um, as everybody is probably aware, they've noticed that first set of bills that have gone out had an extra large penalty amount on the bill. Um, we implemented a new billing software system beginning of March. March we were setting up and getting it all ready. We did not do penalties or disconnects that month. When we did the following month, it threw everything for a whack. So it had two different settings set up one is a penalty and the other was not looking at estimated consumption right and it overbilled roughly 700 customers so we sent out one call now notifications of that and we reprinted the bills after the corrections and and resent everybody a new bill so everything is going well now do you guys have any questions about it? It was not fun, and I hate that it happened, but you, we didn't know it until they were already out. It's like, oh boy. What just happened? I, I don't have any questions. I mean, I understand. Yeah. It, that's unfortunate, but the good news is, you know, nobody's, nobody's harmed. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I just want to make a, a clarification. Um, on the adjustment we just made, it was really for the sewer part only. Yes. The water was would have to be paid for. That is correct. And it's just the sewer part that was not um, that was adjusted. So. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank uh, Donna and Dory were both here on their day off, uh, getting the bill issued. You got perfect. it done. So yes. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> You're to very your welcome. team. Yes. Any, thank you. Um, any other questions? If not, you received a copy of your claims. 
take a motion to approve those as presented. So moved. Motion's been made by Dee. Is there a second? Second. Second by Glenn. Amy? Rodney? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Okay. With that, I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, everyone.